Okay, so today what I really wanted to talk about is not just thinking in systems, but I really want to talk a lot more about being an essentialist, right? And one of the things is actually trying to subtract, to eliminate things, to actually go all in on one thing. And remember, I talked about this before a long time ago, and I was currently reading the book Essentialism because I wanted to kind of go all in on one thing, right? And I really wrote this down and this thing that is the opportunity cost and the trade-off, right? So you see, like, there's most people, like, they often have, like, a big opportunity in life. And I think about this, like, uh, in my teens, right? So I'm currently 19. I have so much opportunity in life. Whether, you know, I have so much opportunity, right? Because I'm already in really good shape and I really want to get in more shape as of now, right? But there's a cost to it, right? Like, what is it going to be? What am I going to be missing out on, right? Am I going to be missing out on making money online? And that's the thing that I've been thinking about a lot recently is, like, should I sacrifice more in the gym like do i have should i actually be able to sacrifice more in the gym to actually go 100 percent all in into entrepreneurship and i feel like the thing that, that has been stagnating my the process was mostly because i was focusing on two things you know people always make this make this excuse like how can i do both things right but you gotta kind of have to shift that perspective of like i choose to do this i choose to do that rather than i have to go to the gym or i have to do that you have to just instead say i choose instead of i have because it kind of just stirs up your mind and kind of makes you get to the point like i choose to do that you know i back then like back in high school like last year i used to always put everything as a priority like i used to put journaling as a priority i used to put meditating as a priority i would just always put reading as a priority and i would always say like i have to do these things in order to improve myself but i started realizing that it might have benefited me but not too too much right so why would i have why do i have to do these things right if i want to put 100 percent into entrepreneurship then you have to subtract right maybe even the gym too maybe even eliminate in the gym and i got this idea so much the fact that you know when i was going to the gym like when i started working out like at the age of 13 i worked out at home i never really had a personal trainer never had a mentor never had a coach etc et like i never had anything that could really help me out to progress my growth in fitness or accelerate my growth in fitness and I remember a big YouTuber actually mentioned this before when I was in his paid community and he was so fucking right that, um, you know, that every single person I often look up to, they have to subtract everything. They have to go for some opportunity cost. They have to go for some trade-off. And yeah, it's a big, huge opportunity to actually get in shape at a very young age because you get so much perks and so much benefits, right? You might be very attractive. You might be looking good on Instagram. You might get more matches on Tinder. You might get more, you know, attraction from women, of course, but that's like the big opportunity, right? Like it really is the big opportunity. But if you think about it in the long term, like wh what are you willing to kind of trade the gym for entrepreneurship for? Because if, if you think about it logically, because I'm thinking about it very logically, that when it comes to business, like when it comes to entrepreneurship, like if I were to go all in on that thing, I would just have to also sacrifice a little bit in the gym, right? And I know that might, I might lose that big opportunity that I just mentioned but when I think about it logically, like I could just focus 100% in business and use that money to actually it, like put it back into like a personal trainer or like a coach. And that would 10x like accelerate my, my goals in fitness. You know what I mean? So let me get my journal and where is my pen? Oh shit. <laughs> but like, I remember I even talked about this before, but when you go all in on, Entrepreneurship, right? So, like, so what day is it? Today is August 12th. By the time I'm recording this, I can always be. So, let's say it is. So, let's say fitness, right? So, like, back then, I've always wanted to go all in on fitness, right? And the truth is, since I didn't have a mentor, since I didn't have a coach, since I didn't have a personal trainer, it was so hard for me to accelerate my growth. I started working out since I was 13 and it kind of took me a while to actually get in the best shape of my life. If I see most people you often see on social media or this and that, I don't know, maybe they've already taken steroids. Um, you know, they're able to accelerate their growth fast. Why? Because they have a personal trainer, they have a coach, right? And what I've been thinking about is kind of eliminate. So I have fitness, right? So I have fitness with me, right? I'm thinking about like wanting to eliminate it. So like if I just cross it out because I don't need it right now, right? Well, I, I think it's like, to be honest, gym is like a hobby. I love going to the gym, right? But 
you have to sacrifice some of your childhood, you have to sacrifice some of your hobbies to put an effort on one thing. So what I'm thinking about doing is going all in into money, right? Into entrepreneurship with money. And with that, you have more perks. It's like a big opportunity because if you think about long term, if you're not focusing on making money right now, life will get really hard. And I do believe that money is what really solves problems, right? A lot of brokers will probably hate on me. They will always disagree with me, but money is what really solves problems. It will actually buys more time, right? So money buys time, right? So money buys time and money buys, what does money buy? Buys time, but it also buys a, a small little quick fix, fixes, right? Like buy shortcuts. Well, it's basically the same thing, right? But like, I even wrote this as well, right? So like the minimum and the extreme, I even wrote this as well. It was like an actionable step and actually did this as well. So like what opportunity is really being offered to you? So I have so many opportunities that's really offered to me, right? And it's just two things, the gym and entrepreneurship. And you know, gym is nice, but it takes ages to bulk up. It just takes so much time to work on the thing, right? And, you know, I've worked out for five years and didn't really get as much like bulked up, like, you know, if you think about Chris Bumstead, for example. And, you know, I even prefer to focus on business and like making money so that I could actually use that money to actually solve other problems and as well put more back into it. And as well, you could actually just hire a personal trainer. And at some point, like the, the biggest extreme, like the biggest pitfalls, like if you, if I don't, like the biggest pains, if I don't really make money right now is that later on in the future, life will get really hard and it's going to be a huge burden and it's going to be a huge struggle right it's going to be a lot of problems that you will have to deal with if you don't have a lot of money that's made if you don't have like a vehicle or like a business on the side for the basic same thing but like you're not going to be able to to get as much resources that you could actually invest in so that's the reason why like there has to be some sort of opportunity cost or trade-off like if you're thinking about like most guys you often see in high school like they often have to prioritize on one sport later on after they finish up high school because there's an opportunity cost for them, right? So they have to prioritize on one thing. There, has, they, there has to be some sort of trade-off that people have to have to make. And I've done this when I was in school because we've all learned opportunity cost and trade-off, like in economics class. But like, you have to learn opportunity cost and trade-offs. And because you have so much opportunities like right in front of us, like there's so much like opportunities in front of us. Like I remember like when I went to, like when I went to a new school, like there was so much fucking opportunities, right? There were so much opportunities that I could have actually participated like in sports that I could have been like in varsity, but I said no to that because I wanted to go all in into business. But guess what, if I fucked it up. But when I think about it right now, like I wanna do the same thing, but make it right. Because that means you have to eliminate all your vices. You have to maybe even sell your PC. You might even have to let go of everything else. And if you wanna really make your opportunity cost really worth it, you have to sacrifice almost all the vices that's in there that really causes yourself, not your business, but like your personal life. like your personal life, right? So this even means video games, junk food, your, your, your stupid friends. And yeah, and that's what I've been thinking about a lot more recently because I spoke to my friend recently, like yesterday, and I was just asking him if I should ever think about like selling my PC, right? Because the truth is like, why do I need my PC for if I have my MacBook and also have my PC? Because I have my MacBook mostly for school, but I've been using my MacBook more often for like graphic design whenever I'm out or whenever like I'm going to places than like when I use my, my PC. Because the reason why I don't really like I don't, I don't really prefer to use my PC. It's because of the, like so much distractions, right? I get so distracted all the time. When I have like two devices in front of me, it's like quite a, frankly a distraction. And I like to recently just now just stick to one thing. And as well, if I have my PC, there's gonna be at some point eventually, if I think long term, I'm gonna eventually have so many gamer friends that would actually possibly surround with me, right? That would possibly annoy the shit out of me. There's gonna be a time where I'm gonna load up Steam like at some weird point. So. If I were to think long term, because I remember back back in 2020, like four years ago, uh, when I bought, like before I bought my PC, like I didn't even play any video games. Like, and without that, I became super successful in what I was doing. Whether it's in sports, whether it's in YouTube, whether it's in all the projects that I've been working on, I've been doing super successful. And I think that if I think about it back then, I could actually use all that to resonate with how it is right now. So that's the thing, like without the PC, I can live without my PC, right? And I can just stick to my MacBook and with my MacBook, it's, it makes it really hard for me to actually, you know, hop on Destiny 2 or like hop on GTA or like hop on any video game because it, it's just not compatible on the on the Mac. So that's what I've been thinking about the most is the fact that 
maybe you should sell the PC, right? Why don't I just sell the PC and stick with just the MacBook? Because first of all, like the biggest trade-off is like, when, when you sell the PC, you can literally use all that money that you sold your PC and you can actually invest it for more time for like a mentor or like any resource, like a course or a book or like a, any source of like tribe of mentors that are able to buy back most of your time. You should be happy that you should trade um, your money for more time because you have to understand like your time is very limited, right? And I guess like when you surround yourself with so many brokies, like you kind of understand like your time, like they value more of their money than their time. But for us, like, we often have to think of how we should be stingy with our time rather than being stingy with our money. Like, you know, I often like, like to kind of trade my money for more time because I want more time back, right? You want more time back. You don't want more money, you want more time. And that's what I think about every time. Like I would just want, like, if you think about like back in the past, like you, you wish you can like go back in time that you wish that you could have had those best moments in high school, that you had those best moments, you know, that you could have just enjoyed life back in those times. You could have participated in sports or like you could have done this in high school. You could have like married this, you know, you could, you could have got on a relationship with that girl or that boy that you've always wanted to be around with and you just feel so much painful that you really want to go back in time that you just keep thinking about it so much about the past that you just can't fucking sleep like i understand that like i can guarantee you like money can solve that kind of problems it kind of kind of just get those quick results right like just quick results and that's the reason what's beautiful about money is the fact that it, it can give you more time and you'd be happy to spend as much money to get more time back you know, especially those heartbreaking moments and these dark moments that's in your life, like, you can think about it. The, the more, like, because I always think about it every time. Like, I always think about, like, my past all the time, think about, like, my regrets and my pains. And I feel like it won't hurt as much if I can trade money for more time because you can get more time back that could be better than before. And you can get the time, the perfect moment, the perfect timing better than before, right? You know and that's what i've been thinking about so so much is that you can get more of that time back with money when you invest in the right things that come in return right and you should surround yourself with people who are like-minded as us like like-minded people who are have a rich in mind not people who have a broken mind and that's what I've been so surrounded into for a while is the fact that I've been surrounded so much with people who have like this weak mindset or this broke mindset. And it's just a huge mentality like mindset shift that I think about it from time because when you think about it in the whole essentialism concept, like your time really matters and money, it does buy time. If you hear these stupid Instagram reels that, oh yeah, money can't buy time. If you, like I guarantee you, like they're already successful. I guess they're entitled to say, but I guess for us, like if we're beginners, like if we're starting out, like we're not allowed to say that until we kind of accomplish it. And besides like you have to study someone who's two to five steps ahead rather than someone who's a hundred steps ahead because they're on the big leagues and they have a different language than like someone who's two to five steps ahead. Like it's really hard for me to kind of step ahead of the game when I learn from someone who's a hundred steps ahead than someone who is two to five steps ahead. You know what I mean? So that's all that really comes to my mind. I've wanted to journal about this in a while, but you know, I talk too much in that journal and that's just a weird habit that I often have. But yeah, uh, I was supposed to actually journal this, but for some reason, like I just like the habit of self-talk. Self-talk talk is actually a really fun habit. So I really like it. And I like to just treat this as if it's like a journal to me. I'd like to treat YouTube as if it's like a journal to me. I don't, like, I know, like, I wanted to treat Twitter as if it's a journal to me, but, like, I feel like Twitter, that's where, like, I want to, like, niche down and, like, go on just one thing. But for this one, I just want to, like, just talk about what comes to my mind. Maybe it could probably help you. Maybe it could help me. Sometimes I like to just watch my old videos and just have a good time. So, yeah. So, I'll see you in the next video.